Welcome to Manufacturing Processes, Machining and Machine Tools Lectures by Prof. Joy G. Tughosh. This is the sixth lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on tool life, machinability, and cutting fluid. He will be discussing about the Taylor's tool life equation, machinability rating calculations, also cutting fluid types, properties and functions of cutting fluids will be discussed. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access my videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to lecture 6. In this lecture, we will be discussing tool life, machinability and cutting fluid. <coughs> now in the last lecture, we have discussed about tool wear. Now we have seen that the tool will fail if uh, the wear is, uh, goes beyond a certain prescribed limit and that defines the failure of the tool. Now the time for which the tool performs is very important to us because tool is a very costly material and we have to find out what is the expected tool life. So in this lecture we will be discussing about tool life and we will be discussing about machinability and cutting fluids. So let's move ahead and start with today's lecture. We will start with tool life. Look at this picture. This is the person Frederick W. Taylor. He was the person to have invented high speed steel or HSS steel and he has done extensive research in uh, the tool life and uh, <clears throat> mainly experimental research. He wanted to find out what affects tool life and he has found out that uh, the tool life is inversely proportional to the cutting speed if other factors remain within a prescribed limits that is the feed and depth of cut. If depth of cut and feed is within certain limits the only thing that inversely affects the tool life is the cutting speed. That means if you increase the cutting speed, tool life decreases. This we have discussed in the previous lectures also. So what is tool life? Tool life represents the useful life of the tool. So we have, we have learned in the previous lecture, the tool can perform up to a certain amount of time. After which the wear is such that we should uh, wear increases and we can consider that the tool has failed. Now the time for which the tool has performed can be said to be the tool life. It is normally expressed in minutes. Now this Taylor <coughs> in 1907 given a formula. This is an empirical formula. This, is, this has no theoretical basis. This is purely based on experiments. Uh, he has done several, several, several experiments on different combination of tool material and workpiece material and uh, different cutting speed and he has come to a conclusion that uh, the cutting speed into the tool life to the power certain index n is equal to a constant c that is vt to the power n is equal to constant c. This is a very, very famous equation still used to find out the tool life. after. Taylor, there were many researchers who came up with many complex relationship uh, <coughs> relating the tool life, the cutting speed, feed, depth of cut and other parameters. But those are all very very complex relationship and based on those are also based on experiments. But the most simplest of all is this one b to the power n is equal to a constant and still is used to find out the tool life. So those complex relationships is not included in this syllabus. In this syllabus, only this Taylor's equation is included. So we'll be discussing uh, Taylor's tool life equation. So we'll discuss the terms here. What is T? T is a tool life in minutes. V is the cutting velocity in meter per minute. And C is a constant. Now what is this constant? Now here, if tool life becomes one minute, so V becomes equal to C. So therefore, you can define the C in, in this manner. It is the cutting velocity for one minute to life. It is the cutting velocity for one minute to life. So if the cutting velocity, what is the cutting velocity 
for which two less becomes one minute then we can say it is a c now it has been c seen that c depends on the combination of tool and workpiece material so it is not only dependent on the tool material it is depending on the combination of tool and workpiece material we'll see in the next slide and n is a constant which is called taylor's tool life index and n is dependent on the tool material so in <coughs> this tentative values of c and n of course if you are using it you should find out your own value experimentally but for your guidelines these are the ranges that are <coughs> provided in handbooks or by taylor <coughs> so people have done several experiments and found out the values of c and n and they have uh, given the ranges for the values of c and n for different for <coughs> different combination of tool and workpiece material so here we see if the uh, tool is hss and the material is stainless steel then normally the value of c is uh, range of 20 to 35 so for different c is therefore dependent on the tool material and workpiece material the sum of it is shown here not all the tool material workpiece materials are shown here so these are the major tool materials that are used in industry nowadays so for this type of tool materials what are the ranges of values of n that is tabulated here so i'll advise the students to remember at least these ranges of values for this type of tool material it might come in hand in some problems n might not be given then you have to assume suitable n and to assume suitable n you should know the ranges of these values of n for different tool materials okay <clears throat> now what taylor was has done that he had taken the log uh, and plotted it it's a plotted <coughs> log log graph so if you take the log here so it comes out to be equation log of b is equal to log of c minus n log t now this is an equation of a straight line this is an equation of a straight line <coughs> so we plot these values here and straight line can become it is a negative slope so therefore minus n so from here we can find out for one minute t we can find out this if this is one then for one minute to life what is v and that v is called the c we can find out the value of c and we can find out the value of n so if we find out the value of c and n then we can plot it in e <coughs> we can use it in the equation and can find out the for a known cutting speed you can find out the expected to life so several problems based on this we'll be discussing in the class so these are the graphs you can go through the graphs how cutting speed affects the tool life for different tool material okay now how uh, what are the factors that affects tool life so the cutting condition is one of the important factors that affect tool lives what are the cutting condition cutting condition are speed feed and depth of cut so i have said and taylor has said in fact not me that if we increase this cutting speed then tool life decreases so that is an inversely proportional and directly related now can you say that for feed and depth of cut no we cannot say that for feed and depth of cut so there exists a complete relationship between the uh, the tool life feed and depth of cut so this was this the several researchers has found out the relationship you can go through the relationship you can google it and find it out i am not going into that and tool geometry also affect so if you increase the rake angle the cutting force decreases so <clears throat> so if the cutting force decreases the tool life again uh, but <clears throat> problem what happens is that uh, increasing the rake angle reduces the strength of the tool this may reduce the life of the tool so that is the, that is how tool geometry also affect the tool life tool material obviously some material will wear rapidly some material will wear slowly so tool material also affects the tool life workpiece material if the workpiece material is work hardened or it contains certain uh, impurities hard impurities or hard inclusions then the tool life decreases and of course the cutting fluid if you apply cutting fluid the life of the tool will obviously increase because it lubricates and it acts as a coolant <clears throat> okay now very important uh, aspect of machining is machinability of materials machinability of metals basically means the ease with which a work material can be machined 
Now this is a very vague term. What do you mean by ease with which a metal can be machined? Or rather, what is the conditions or what is the reference or what is the standard by which we can measure the ease of machining? Now there are several way of considering <coughs> this standard. It can be a surface finish, it can be tool life, it can be the power required, it can be the force required. Normally, machinability is measured in terms of the tool life. So, if the tool life is more, then we can say that it is easily machinable. Okay, so that is one of the factors. Similarly, if the surface finish, you can say if the surface finish is high, then you can say the metal is machinable, highly machinable. So, to quantify machinability, we have to quantify in terms of certain standards. Okay, uh, machinability ratings. To quantify it, we have introduced a term which is called machinability ratings. Now, to understand machinability ratings, you should understand what is specific cutting speed. Now, specific cutting speed is defined as the cutting speed corresponding to a predetermined tool life. Let's say, for a com particular combination of tool and workpiece material, uh, for 10 minutes tool life, the cutting speed is, let's say, 100 meter per minute. So, the specific cutting speed for 100 mi uh, 10 minutes to life is 100. So, likewise, we can find it out or calibrate it with respect to a particular standard material. So, machinability, we can find it out, find cutting speed for 60 minutes to life of a standard material uh, with reference, with re, sorry, for test material with reference to a standard material. T stands for test material, S, S for standard material. So likewise, you create the rank with, ref, with reference to a particular material. Let's say <coughs> uh, some standard material may be SAE 1, 2, 1, 2, or it may be a free cutting steel, which can cut very easily. So with respect to any standard material, you compare or find out the uh, machinability rating. Now, how it is important? Now, for a designer, if you want to select a particular uh, component material, now you want you know that that component will be manufactured by machining. So, obviously, you will select that particular material which is easy to machine. So, there comes the machinability ratings. So, this is an example. You go through this example. It's given in my slides. Okay, now we will move on to cutting fluids. The cutting fluids are introduced between the tool and the workpiece material at the interface between the tool and the workpiece material. Why they are uh, introduced? Because of several reasons. The main reasons are basically acts as a lubricant and coolant. So what does it lubricate? It lubricates the interface between the tool and the workpiece. And what does it cool? It cools the tool, chip and the workpiece. So one of the functions of cutting fluids is to cool the work, to cool the tool. Uh, to lubricate and reduce friction, to improve the surface finish. Obviously, if it is lubricated, the surface finish will be high. And it contains certain chemicals which prevent from or uh, uh, protect this finished surface from corrosion. And first, in certain cases, it helps to wash away the chips, particularly in drilling. In drilling, we apply cutting fluid. One of the major reasons is that it backflushes the chip from the hole outside. <clears throat> so, properties of cutting fluid to be used as a cutting fluid, the fluid has to have certain properties. So what are the properties that we will be discussing? It should have high heat absorption capability so that it should be a good coolant. It should have good lubricant properties so that it would be a good lubricant. Now these two are conflicting in nature. One which is very good coolant cannot be a very good lubricant and one which is very good lubricant cannot be a very good coolant. So again, we have to have a trade-off between its lubricating property and coolant property. High flash point means it should not catch fire easily because it will be introduced in a, in a zone where the temperature is high. So you do not want it to catch fire. Neutral, it should not react chemically because we are dealing with metal. So it should not chem react chemically. It should be odorless. It should not give bad smell. Obviously, it should be harmless to skin because when you are spraying it, uh, the operator's hand <coughs> may be exposed to this uh, cutting fluid. It should be non-corrosive to the work or the machine and lastly it should be transparent. 
so that the operator can see the interface between the tool and the workpiece. It should be viscosity should be low so that it can flow easily and it should be low priced obviously. So these are the properties of cutting fluids. How do we apply manual application? We can flood it between the tool and the workpiece. Uh, various applications are there. Okay, we'll move on to the cutting fluid. Water can be used as a cutting fluid, but it is a very good coolant and a very bad lubricant. And of course, it has a uh, highly corrosive property. So therefore, water is not used as a coolant. <clears throat> now comes straight cutting oils. These cutting oils are derived from petroleum, uh, petroleum, animal, marine or vegetable origin. So these are mineral oils, uh, basically petroleum based or it can be fats of animals and <coughs> uh, plants. Now these type of oils have a very good lubricating property but they have very poor uh, this thing, um, uh, cooling property. So to do what? To mix water, then the obvious choice is to mix water and this mineral oils. Now oil and water are immiscible, how to do it? So for that we use emulsifiers. These emulsifiers, what they do is that <coughs> they uh, <coughs> break the oil into smaller molecules and disperses among the water. So typically in the ratio of water to oil is 30 is to 1. Now water acts as a good coolant and the mineral oil present in that combination acts as a good lubricant. So water soluble or water miscible cutting fluids. Now oils with additives. Now if you don't want water, water is highly corrosive. So you can use oils with certain kinds of adhesives. This adhesive use the cooling property, enhance the cooling property which is a uh, not there, not very much there in the, in the oils. So these additives may be amines, nitrites which prevents rust, uh, germicides to prevent bacterial growth and uh, you can use sulfur and other chemical compounds phosphorus chlorine so that they reduce the temperature by by forming a uh, solid films between the tool and the workpiece so this is called extreme pressure lubricants lubrication okay now chemical fluids now, these are not oils but chemicals which made in auto solution so these chemicals are like chlorine sulfur phosphorus uh, plus certain wetting agents are introduced between the tool and workpiece. They provide good cooling co properties, but the lubricant properties are very poor. So therefore, you use semi-chemical fluids. Semi-chemical fluids have small amounts of emulsified oil and added to increase the lubricating characteristics. Okay, so these are various types of cutting fluids that are used. Now, one of the major aspects of machining, uh, environmental uh, aspects of machining is the disposal of the cutting fluids. Various government rules have uh, been introduced to prevent uh, machinists from disposing these cutting fluids anywhere because these are highly chemical and uh, toxic in nature and can create environmental hazards. So they have countries, mainly European and North American countries have strict rules to uh, dispose these cutting fluids properly. So there is an environmental issues related to machining and that is mainly disposal of the cutting fluids. So we come to the conclusion of this lecture. In this lecture, we have discussed uh, about tool life and we have discussed Taylor's tool life equations and we have discussed about the machinability and we have discussed about the cutting fluid. So I hope you have understood what I have discussed here and you have liked the videos. Thank you for watching this video.